Motor control centers are designed to house electrical equipment that start and stop motors, provide overload protection, interrupt short circuit conditions on motor leads, and allow local or remote operation of contactors. In this program, we'll cover generally accepted safe work practices for working with this type of equipment. Check your location standards and the manufacturer's recommended procedures before doing any work on motor control centers. All equipment must be clearly labeled and accurate. Up-to-date one-line diagrams must be available for safe work on this equipment. And be sure you're working on the correct equipment. Identify, test, lock, tag, and try all remote sources of energy before work is done on a motor control center. Be sure that all mechanical interlocks have functioned properly. These devices are designed to prevent access to the motor control center unless the load side is de-energized first. Identify all electrical interlocks. Electrical interlocks are designed to de-energize the control power if access is attempted without first isolating the motor load. Have all tools and personal protective equipment available and on site before work is begun. Open circuit breakers, fused switches, and contactors before removing or replacing them. Be sure fuses are de-energized before pulling or replacing them. Contactors have many of the same design characteristics of circuit breakers, such as arc chutes, contacts, and plug-in fingers. However, contactors are not designed to interrupt heavy fault currents. Instead, fuses are used to protect the system from damage when fault conditions occur. Contactors are closed by manual operation of a remote control device, which energizes a coil. Once closed, they're held closed by this coil. Should a loss of power occur, the coil will release the contactor to the open position. All contactors have arc chutes that interrupt arcs during fault conditions. The arc chutes on contactors are smaller than those found on circuit breakers and should be visually checked following each fault condition and during routine maintenance. This should be performed while the contactor is de-energized and isolated from all control and backfeed power sources. A regular maintenance schedule must be established for contactors. The timing of maintenance depends on the frequency of operation rather than a fixed time schedule. Manufacturer specifications will indicate the need for maintenance on these devices. Let's review in detail the safe work practice for maintenance of contactors. Before removing or installing contactors, check that all possible sources of control power have been disconnected. This requires... One of the more reliable types of overcurrent protective devices is the fuse. The fundamental element of a fuse consists of a fusible link or links enclosed in a tube and connected to contact terminals. The electrical resistance of the link is very low and it acts as a conductor. When current in the circuit exceeds the fuse size, the link melts and opens the circuit to protect the conductors, other circuit components, and equipment. In this program, we'll discuss the various types of fuses in use today, explain how they work, illustrate how they're tested, look at the types of service they are used in, as well as safety precautions to follow when working with fuses. The voltage rating of a fuse determines the ability of the fuse to suppress the internal arcing that occurs after a fuse link melts and an arc is produced. If a fuse is used that has a voltage rating lower than the circuit voltage, arc suppression will be impaired. Under some fault current conditions, the fuse may not safely clear. All fuses have specific ampere ratings. When selecting the ampacity of a fuse, consideration must be given to the type of load it carries and... Molded case circuit breakers are commonly used devices for low voltage circuit protection. They're available in a wide range of sizes and ratings and have many applications. Molded case circuit breakers are normally used where a resettable circuit interrupting device is needed. 
In this program, we're going to look at the major components of molded case circuit breakers. Identify the four trip elements used in molded case circuit breakers. Identify four commonly performed tests on molded case circuit breakers and discuss generally accepted guidelines for working safely with this type of equipment. The trip element on a conventional breaker uses bimetallic and electromagnets to provide overload or short circuit protection. This type of protection is called thermal magnetic protection and is an industry standard. Let's look at both the thermal and the magnetic operating positions of the trip element to see how they work. Thermal trip action is achieved through the use of bimetal strips heated by the load current. A bimetal strip consists of two strips of dissimilar metal bonded together. Each strip has a different thermal... Vacuum type circuit breakers provide three outstanding features. They provide maximum dielectric strength. They have a long operating life and they require very little maintenance. In this program, we're going to look at vacuum type circuit breakers. We'll identify the major components. We'll describe the operation and we'll discuss safety considerations to follow when working around this type of equipment. A vacuum is an excellent medium for interrupting a flow of current. In vacuum circuit breakers, contacts are drawn apart in a chamber from which air has been removed. When the contacts of a vacuum circuit breaker are closed, current flows through the interrupter. When a trip occurs, the contacts separate very quickly. An arc is drawn between the contact surfaces and is rapidly moved around a slotted electrode surface by a self-induced magnetic effect. This rapid movement limits the amount of electrode erosion and prevents the formation of hot spots on the surface of the electrode. The arc burns in an ionized metal vapor, which continually leaves the contact area and condenses on the surrounding metal shield. At an early current zero, the arc is extinguished and vapor production stops. The oil tank on oil-filled circuit breakers hold the insulating fluid that provides the insulating and interrupting medium. The voltage level and interrupting capacity determines the volume of oil and the number of tanks that are used. The oil must be free of contaminants and have high dielectric strength. Special electrical tests are used to determine the oil's suitability. Some oil-filled circuit breakers use bayonet-type contacts. These provide good surface contact with longer service life than standard butt contacts. The contacts consist of a rod which serves as the moving contact. The rod fits into a circular cluster of stationary contact fingers. The tips of the moving rod and stationary cluster serve as arcing contacts. They're made of harder, less conductive material than the main portion of the contacts. The contacts must be properly aligned, adjusted, and maintained in order for the breaker to carry normal load current without thermally damaging itself. The arc interrupter of an oil-filled circuit breaker is made of an insulating material that surrounds the contacts and extinguishes the arc. When an arc is formed, the pressure created by the arc is retained inside the interrupter. As the breaker opens and the contacts separate, the moving contact passes through the interrupter. Sulfur hexafluoride circuit breakers provide an excellent insulating medium for arc interruption. Sulfur hexafluoride gas has a dielectric strength that is two and a half times greater than that of air. In this program, we'll look at the major components that make up sulfur hexafluoride type circuit breakers, as well as pointing out generally accepted safe work practices for this type of equipment. The bushings in sulfur hexafluoride circuit breakers are designed with their porcelain center exposed to the main breaker tank, which is filled with SF6 gas. Since the porcelain is under low pressure, the gas will flow outward in the event of a pinhole crack. This will preserve the insulating qualities of the bushing until repairs can be made. The main purpose of the bushing is to provide an electrical path from the breaker to the connecting bus. Some bushings may be insulated with sulfur hexafluoride gas. 
Caution. If the bushings contain sulfur hexafluoride gas, extreme care must be exercised during installation or removal. Any shock or strain on the bushings could cause them to rupture. The interrupters contain the hexafluoride gas and house the stationary contact assembly and the moving.